Hi there, I'm Aaron. Welcome to the Cult of Cinema and welcome to Tuesday. And that can only mean one thing reviewed and ranked. So, this is a very special, very different review to ranked because right now, what's going on that's getting the whole collecting world in a in a, ti- in a in a tizzy, as my grandparents would say back in the day, there's a Criterion Flash sale. So for those that are unaware, and if you're watching my channel, you probably already are aware, Criterion is kind of the company for when it comes to important films, important cinema, or they were for years. Uh, they were kind of the bo- boutique label, and many other have grown up since then. But Criterion paved the way. They were kind of the guys that uh, they brought commentaries. They started doing like things in the original aspect ratio. Criterion were groundbreaking. So what I thought I'd do as a special event ranked, special for this Criterion sale, and hopefully you can watch this in enough time if you're ordering some Criterion stuff, this might help out. So uh, what I've done is I've picked seven Criterions, one for every day of the week. And I'm going to give you, you know, seven excellent Criterion choices from seven to one. They are in order. Uh, not like seven is bad. Obviously, if it's on the list, it's already a great film. At least in uh, in my not so humble opinion, it is. So let's do that right now. Let's talk about seven great Criterion releases that, if you don't have them in your collection, we're gonna review and rank them really quickly. I did. Well, I was gonna mix this up, make, make a mystery of it, but I'm not going to. And since there's seven films, I'm gonna go from seven to one. Review and rank seven Criterions that should be, but may not be, in your collection. Number seven. This one was a total blind buy for me when I saw it on uh, on the Criterion website, and I really didn't know a lot about it. I hadn't seen it, I hadn't heard much about it, but I watched the trailer. That's all I saw was the trailer, and it really stuck with me. It was actually one where I watched it, I was kind of like intrigued. I didn't go out and get it right away, uh, but I think it was around the sa- later on that day, because it was during the Criterion sale that I checked this out. I showed the trailer to my better half as well, and... Uh, I don't want to say or give anything away about this film, but this is a very surreal Czechoslovakian new wave film. Uh, don't let those words scare you away, though. This is a really good, really interesting film. And it's only a short film, a short watch, too. I'm pretty sure it's no more than yeah, 76 minutes long. And this is Valerie and Her Week of Wonder. So this is number, what number are you? 761 in the Criterion Collection. If you've not checked out any check cinema yes that was done uh, that pun was totally on purpose then uh check out this checks of acting classic valerie and her weak wonders i always find it's best to if you've got the if you've got the bones to do it go in and grab one criterion that you don't know like there's always a safe bet so there's always the stuff that you're that you're going to get when you're starting out like most people go and they get um they'll get like a uh like a raw tenenbaum or life aquatic or bottle rocket something like that you know the safe ones but always uh, take the chance every once in a while when you can do it to go for a blind buy that you haven't tried or haven't seen before some of those turn out to be the, your, the best releases you can think about now this one I hadn't seen before and it's w- which is amazing because I'm a huge fan of this actor director and that's Orson Welles so he made this kind of documentary called F is for fake and this is actually pretty fascinating it deals with well fakes it and uh, basically we looks at the uh, art forger I, I gotta look at the back because the names are I'm not good with here Elmer Dehori and Bogford Clifford Irving of, of course who did the infamous biography uh, of, uh, of a certain famous millionaire who uh, hadn't spoke to the guy but uh it's uh, it was pretty, pretty cool. I did the Hearst biography. <laughs> so anyway, if you've never seen this, this is really good. The narrative that it plays with, Orson Welles does this in a genius way, and it in a weird way. This kind of calls back to his original fakery that made him famous in the first place, which is War of the Worlds on radio. So uh, an excellent title <clears throat> that I do recommend you check out. F is for fake. <clears throat> this is number 288 in the Criterion Collection. Lose my voice there. And now number five. It is a master class in editing, a fantastic horror film, and a really cool short story by Daphne du Maurier as well. And that is the classic Julie Christie Donald Sutherland film, Don't Look Now. It is a horror film. It is a film. It's a filmmaker's film. If you ever want to, like, 
if you're learning to make movies, if you're a director, you're a, you want to direct, you want to edit, you want to write, uh, you want to watch Don't Look Now, actually, because this is a master class in editing a film and the uh, kind of like with the maximum impact. And it works. This movie is genius. It is so well done. This here is, by the way, number 745 in the Criterion Collection. Uh, this red coat going to be really important <clears throat> in this uh, in this film. It's going to be extremely important. And uh, yeah, this one creeped me out, guys. This one creeped me out back in the day. This was one of the cases where I actually read the story long before I saw the film. Number four is another hauntingly beautiful film by uh, Paolo Pressburger. A lot of people go for the Red Shoes or they go for the Life and Death Mist or Colonel Blimp. But uh, my favorite on Criterion so far has been Black Narcissus. This film, look at it. This cover is gorgeous. And once you see the film, th it really comes into play. This is a film that is, it's tense. It's uh, it's well acted. It, it's There's certain sequences that are kind of white knuckle. And uh, not in a way, just a fear type of way, but in in its own unique kind of psychologically damaged way with uh, Deborah Carr uh, doing an amazing role in this one. If you've not seen this film, go in blind. Really good. Really, really great performances. I think, I can't remember if it's, uh, is it Flora Robson? That, anyway, there's a, a girl in this film that is absolutely like spellbinding. Her acting is is just insanely good. It'll stick with you for a while, but in all the right ways. Number three, we're going to get a little bit lighter now, is a comedy that's often called, and I think sometimes mislabeled as a screwball comedy, which I, I kind of don't think it is, but it is a great, great comedy nonetheless, and that is uh, Clark Gable and Claudette Colbert in It Happened One Night. This was an incredibly great film. I love this film. I really, from like the opening sequence of this film right down to the very, very end, this thing is amazing all the way through. It, it's funny. The, the, both of these actors have such sparkling, uh, kind of like coming off the screen chemistry, and this is a great one. This, by the way, is number 736. By the way, Black Narcissus, which I forgot to tell you, was number 35, I think. Make me, let me make sure. Uh-huh. I can't see. I totally got that wrong. 93. I need new glasses. <clears throat> uh, but this one here is amazing. There's a great like uh, kind of feature on uh, Screwball Comedy in here, which I recommend you check out as well. By the way, when you get a Criterion, it's fantastic to watch the movie, but dive into their features, because their features, like by far and large, are amazing. Number two. We're getting through these faster than I thought. Maybe I could have mixed them up a bit. All right. So number two is the incredible film uh, with Burt Lancaster and Tony Curtis. Uh, one of the best written dialogue films I've ever, I've ever seen. And if you are a writer, you owe it to yourself to not just watch this film, but just to study this film, to study how well the dialogue is, uh, is done in this movie. It is. It is, as, as they would say back in the day, and as Vince Vaughn would say back in the, in the day, it's money, baby. And that is Sweet Smell of Success, an incredible film with uh, Burt Lancaster. I think he's like the poison pen kind of, uh, yeah, gossip columnist J.J. Hunsucker. And uh, Tony Curtis is, uh, is, a, is a press agent. Stunning film. That's all I want to give away. That's all I want to tell you. I'm not going to tell you, like, the plot or anything. Just go in, like, let yourself dive into this world. Let it immerse you into its, uh, into its narrative and amaze you with its dialogue. Because it will. It, it is that damn good. Not even joking. And by the way, let's see. The uh, number on this one is 555. Five. So there you go. And number one. What is my number one pick for a criterion that should be in your collection that, uh, you uh, that you may not have, but you should have it. Well, I'm going to tell the cast first. I'm, I'm going to go with there. So it's first. It's directed by Robert Aldrich. It uh, has Ralph Meeker, Albert Decker, Paul Stewart, uh, Wesley Addy in this one as well. Uh, Marion Carr. I think it's been a long since I've, since I've seen this, uh, but I think there's like a cameo, like an early 
appearance by by Cloris Leachman. I'm I'm going to say Cloris Leachman. So let me just let me look. Let me just check and be sure because I don't want to steer you guys wrong, and I'm not going to be one of those people that uh, turns off the camera and then comes back and says, "Well, look at that. I uh, I I I was right or I was wrong all along," and then just edits it out. That's not me. That's not my style, man. So let's find out. Yep, the girl at the beginning of the uh, of the film is a very young Cloris Leachman. So you get to see rest in peace, Cloris Leachman, a fantastically young and very attractive actually Cloris Leachman, right here in Kiss Me Deadly. So if you ever seen her like in her older years or maybe even in her later roles, this is an earlier role for Leachman. This is an amazing film. Kiss Me Deadly is just an incredible film. The, the packaging on this, by the way, is, is so good. It's like uh, this is basically a uh, I guess it's kind of a film noir kind of style of film. It does have the pulp, like the look of a pulp novel to it. And I love the way that it's done. There are some great features on there, including one called, uh, what's it, Mickey? Mike Hammer's Mickey Splain. So basically Ralph Meeker plays Mike Hammer in this one here. And yes, we do get to see the titular Mike Hammer character. And he does a fantastic job. So there you go. There's a Criterion Flash show going on right now. So hopefully you're watching this while the sale's going on. If not, hopefully you're taking notes for when the next sale comes up or if you just want to get a good movie or get a a film lover in your collection uh, the, uh you know in your circle uh, a good gift then seven movies to choose from a valerie and her world and her week of wonders a czechoslovakian new wave film that is really really well done and beautifully shot there is orson wells f is for fake i do think that this in a way parallels his war of the worlds in uh in a unique way so it's not in a haha i fooled you it's a there's no there's no aliens coming type of way but in a unique way it does kind of like uh, parallel his war of the world's earlier success uh the creepy and amazingly edited don't look now really recommend this one black narcissist powell and pressburger is always a duel that you want in your collection and this film is beautifully shot wonderfully acted and something that sticks with you the classic comedy and beautiful chemistry between Clark Gable and Claudette Colbert and it happened one night the scandalizing dialogue and just insanely on top of their game acting with Burt Lancaster and Tony Curtis in sweet smell of success and number one easily goes to Ralph Meeker as Mickey Splane's Mike Hammer in the mind-bending uh repo man inspiring film kiss me deadly there you go that's seven nights if you get them all if you got the bones get them all there you go seven nights have seven fantastic films that you won't watch once you won't watch twice but they're ones that you go back to the well to again and again i am aaron thank you for joining me tonight here in the call of cinema this has been a very very special criterion reviewed and ranked and i'll see you here soon again well next tuesday for the next reviewed and ranked and what's it going to be? Well, come back Tuesday and find out.